Welcome to TPI Talk in 20, where we're making entrepreneurship and investing a team sport. The Players Impact is an exclusive network of athletes, artists, and collaborators inspired and encouraged to shape the future we envision. Through opportunity, education, and influence, our elite collective accelerates the potential of every member to transcend any game. At The Players Impact, we are about legacy beyond our professional careers. We are bringing our diverse community of investors, entrepreneurs, and those in transition together through this podcast with thought leadership, subject matter expertise, and peer advice. Listen to us where you find your favorite podcasts. You don't want to miss hearing from our team of professional athletes, venture capitalists, and other founding CEOs about their stories, opportunities, and experiences. I'm Tracy DeForge, the founder and CEO, your host of TPI Talk in 20. Welcome to TPI Talk in 20. I'm your host, Tracy DeForge. And on this episode, I'm very excited to bring Garrett Clue, one of our TPI advisors, to talk about what the player's impact is, our backgrounds, and what steps TPI has been able to make over the last four years. Garrett, I'm so excited to have you on as TPI's first host of our new podcast, TPI Talk in 20. I um, thought it was most appropriate to have you on as our first guest, um, given how much you've done for TPI, how long you've been with us, um, and we want to hear more about you. And um, so why don't you introduce yourself, give a little bit about your background. Hi, Tracy. Thanks. It's great to be here with you, and I'm excited to be first guest and the guinea pig. Um, but, uh, you know, I spent about 10 years as an athlete, um, I was fortunate enough to compete for the U S uh, at the 2004 Olympic games in the sport of rowing. Um, no one grows up in life and wants to be a rower. You have to fail at another sport. So that's what I did. And I didn't, because I'm an overachiever, I didn't fail at just one sport. I failed at two different sports in order to find rowing. But once I did, um, I was really fortunate to be able to find something that sort of really resonated with me and, um, and ultimately made, you know, six national teams and, and won, you know, several medals at the world championships. And, um, that's my athletic background. And, and, you know, I think throughout this conversation, we'll be able to talk more about, uh, my professional experience and how that sort of weaves into TPI and why this is important to me. Yeah, a hundred percent. Um, we, when we first met, you know, you had had some experience in this in this realm of athletes as investors and and using their star power. Um, what about TPI was more attractive than the other things that you had seen out there that made you, as an athlete, as a professional, want to be part of what we were doing? Look, I think fundamentally, um, you know having been a part of this athlete ecosystem for as long as I have and seen so many athletes make terrible decisions around this, both entrepreneurship and investing, um, I didn't see anything out there that was adequately addressing um, the needs of athletes. And, you know, that first sort of iteration, when I first met you, it seemed like this was the platform that we could really make a difference and really actually help this community of people that, um, you know, were looking for help, we're looking for resources and couldn't find them. And, you know, there's that, that saying, you can't help, you know, those that don't want help. Right. And that's not, we don't try to do that, but for those that do, I think, you know, and I thought this from the very beginning that TPI had sort of the foundation to be able to really build something that's meaningful, that positively impacted the athlete community. And we've come a long way since that first meeting, haven't we? Uh, it feels like decades ago. Yeah. Um, and it's remarkable. And that's a testament to your hard work and, and to the other advisors and to everyone that's contributed along the way. But yeah, there's been a lot of iterations, um, some twists and turns, you know, like every startup, uh, you know, there, there are always challenges, but um, I feel more confident than ever about the future of TPI, about the present of TPI. And, and think that we're really sort of on the precipice of being able to, uh, to establish that vision that, you know, that you and Jason set out, you know, however many years ago, and that, you know, I was able to sort of join in in, in 2017. And, and it's exciting. It's a testament really to our community and the need that I think we are filling. Um, when we started the idea, you know, around some investing opportunities, 
the athletes and their word of mouth marketing, the, the telling their friends that we were a great place, to, you know, to, to share in sort of like-minded, um, not only around investing, but entrepreneurship, they, it was a hole that we were filling and really it was our community that, that catapulted us to where we are today. If it weren't for them, I don't think that we could have done any of these things, but we, as we work to sort of look at our, our roster, our team of athletes and, and now growing into the artist community, you know, we often internally talk about the athlete investor, the athlete entrepreneur and the athlete in transition. Um, just share some thoughts around the athlete entrepreneur and, and, um, yeah, I want to go back. I want to go back to the community piece a little bit because you know establishing trust in this um, in this community is not easy to do. And I think, look, there's a lot of we know this. There's a lot of people out there saying that they're doing what we're doing. And you know, I hope that more people are successful at this. That means that more athletes get the help they need. But we know that, like, of all the things that we've seen, you know, doing what you say you're going to do is how you establish trust, right? And I think from the very beginning, that's what you guys, that was the, that was the, uh, the example that you set from the very beginning was like, look, this is what we're going to do. And, and you delivered. And when athletes, you know, you know, athletes hear so much crap from people about promises and this and that. And when someone actually delivers, that's how you end up with that sort of word of mouth situation. So I think that was critical. And, and I think we've, we've tried the best to our ability to really continue to deliver on the things that we say we're going to do. And I was like, it's not a hundred percent all the time, but it's pretty, pretty dang close. So going to, going to the next piece about was the athlete, the investor, is that, is that the next thing you wanted to? I either we're going to, let's talk about them all, but I was thinking about the athlete uh, entrepreneur. Okay. Let's do that first. Yeah. Look, I mean, I think, you know, there's this like, trope or like common archetype of like, oh, why athletes make perfect entrepreneurs. And I think that there's a lot of reasons that that that's probably true. Um, and a lot of those are like pretty well-worn stories. Oh, hard work, persevering, grit, you know, risk, like, I, and I, and I think that there's, there's, there's a lot to, you know, to why athletes can excel in that. But I think that there's, and this is what people don't really talk about. First of all, it's not for everybody and it's not for every athlete. And just because you're able because to- because you can, doesn't mean you should, right? That's right, the, absolutely. And, and, and just be, yeah, exactly. Just because you have resources and an idea doesn't mean that you're cut out to be an entrepreneur. And there's nothing wrong with that. That doesn't make you like a bad person or like weak or anything. But like, you know, in really reflecting on, on why there are significant challenges to athletes being entrepreneurs. Like athletes love routine, right? Like we get up every day, train the same thing. Like, and entrepreneurship is, is like the exact opposite of that. There's like no routine at all, right? It's just white space every day. And, and without, you know, real direction and routine, that's a scary place for an athlete, right? Um, yeah. And I think, look, the one thing that I think is the most probably uh, helpful for, for the athlete is, you know, we're really used to personal responsibility. Like if, if we don't do it, it's not going to get done, right? We know we have to put the work in. And I think that's where a lot of entrepreneurs sort of fail is like, oh, I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll hire someone to do this or if there's, and there aren't resources. And so like really understanding that there's this per personal responsibility element, like that's, critical, I think, to being, and you know this better than anyone, like the, the amount of work that you have to do every day. And you're like, look, I mean, you have help, but at the end of the day, it's on you, right? Yeah. It's a hundred percent on you. And that may not be fair, but that's what you signed up for. And, um, and I think that's, that's one of the reasons that athletes can really excel at entrepreneurship. Yeah, agreed. And I think that we're seeing like the trend towards athletes being founders of businesses has really grown ever, even since we started TPI four years ago. The amount of actually active players that are building their own businesses has been super exciting to watch. But your your uh, words of caution are, are heated and, and how we try to approach the athlete entrepreneur. That means that, you know, we want to give them the support and the coaching that they're used to. But at the end of the day, it does fall on them to to give it what it needs. Yeah, here, here's another here's another challenge. Um, you know, 
I think athletes, they take on this impossible dream, right? It's like, I'm going to be in the NFL or I want to be in the Olympics or I want to do whatever. And they do it right against all the odds. They, they find a way yeah. to do it. And then they have a business idea and most, you know, most entrepreneurs, whatever the first idea that they start with ends up somewhere else, right? They pivot. I mean, just the market tells them certain things. And one of the challenges for me, having helped start a number of businesses is like, when you decide you're going to do that first thing, like you are, that's it. There's no pivoting. You're not like, oh, I'm going to do, you know, like I'm going to do something else. It's like, and falling in love with that first idea and being completely intractable to, um, you know, listening to the market and finding the right sort of product market fit. That's a real, I think that's a challenge. And I've seen it. I've seen it, not just in athlete entrepreneurs, but I think specifically for athletes, it's a challenge because like we're used to like, it does like just because a bunch of people said it's not going to work like so what like we've done that already like we've right. heard that enough so I and think it's that's it's a-, a little bit humbling too right the the entrepreneur the athlete has to be humble about where they what they don't know knowing what you don't know and taking taking uh when somebody calls your baby ugly you got to take that constructive criticism and, and work on it and sometimes it's just an ugly baby right it's, it's just it an ugly baby <laughs> Just. <laughs> agreed agreed um well so let's flip it and talk a little bit about the the less ugly babies on the investing side and um you know the, the type of things that tbi that we've been able to do and and how you played such an int- integral role in in sort of the offerings that we've been able to to bring to the community over the last few years yeah so i think this is a good opportunity to tell like the, my first first time I invested in the company. And it was like one of the first three that I ever saw, which was the first mistake, right? You shouldn't like, there's no hurry. There is like, when you just start investing, you feel like there's FOMO, you're going to miss it. And it's going to be the next Uber or whatever. And I I can remember the morning after the money was wired, I felt like I should jump into the Hudson river. I was like, that was the dumbest thing. I, I should have just lit that money on fire. And you know, like, what am I doing? This is stupid. Um, and it wasn't stupid, right? I, I was I was looking at it as a lesson. Like I need to be in the game to understand the game. And part of what TPI does is allow people to get in the game without having to, with an appropriate amount of exposure because of low minimums, right? Like that's that's critical. And I think being able you you can't you can only sort of theorize what it's like to be an investor. You can read all the angel investment books until you actually put money to work. It, 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 it's not the same psychology. It's not the same feeling. So, you know, what, one of the things I think for, for the athlete community is really understand what game you're playing. And we go back to like sports analogies, like we like winning, we're used to winning, you know, we want to be winning. Um, typically angel investors lose a lot, mm-hmm. but they win enough that it makes sense right now we're TPI is trying you know, and is um, shifting the odds in the I- in investors' favor by f- by getting access to deals that normally angel investors wouldn't get access to, um, by getting in later stage deals that have less risk in them. They may have less upside, but they have less risk. And I think part of the deal is like, first do no harm, right? Like let's mm-hmm. preserve preserve like some amount of capital and live to play another day. Um, And that's, that's, you know, part of, I think what makes TPI special is, is, is really the getting, getting the opportunity to get in the game and then getting access to these unbelievable opportunities that, you know, are, would typically be off limits to, to most folks in our, you know, in like our subset. Yeah, no, and it's true, like, and there are varying degrees of that angel investor and what you can do, you know, we see the trend around athletes and using their brand to propel companies and and all those types of things, but there's not necessarily the need for that in angel investing to be so involved in the company's outcome. I think that's an important distinction that TPI makes as well, is that just to be part and, and get equity in it, you don't have to leverage your personal brand for every investment that you make. Uh, coming into an opportunity and just letting the capital do the work is, is something that I think is important to mention too, because I think 
venture is getting confused with brand ambassadorship and owning equity in in companies that you're you're promoting instead of actually just investing in yeah that's a good point and and you know i like that with tpi there's an opportunity like do you want to get involved like okay let's figure that out we'll try to get you involved you know and i think that's like for me, my own personal experience, that's where I learned the most. So that very first company that I invested in, I was like, I have to get involved with this company. Even though it was a small amount of money, I was like, I need, I have to like, and I started selling and I started, you know, setting up meetings and I didn't know, I didn't know what I was doing, but like, it didn't matter. I was, I was learning through the process and it was for me, you know, I wanted to be doing that stuff. And I think some athletes do and some athletes don't, they want to be passive, but there's opportunities you know, if you have a if you have a very specific network that aligns with a certain you know ventures you know sales, then you could be helpful and maybe end up as an advisor and get a little equity bump or something. You know, I mean, like that's cool. That's the way it should work. Yeah, agreed. And and you know, we're as we are looking to expand beyond sort of just those investment opportunities. We're excited um, to see the next six months come to fruition. Some of those opportunities that don't necessarily involve just investing in companies, but bringing these to the community in ways that will, I think, even open more eyes to what the early stage ecosystem looks like. Yeah, I mean, this is something that you and I have talked about, right? Is like, is like providing variety and how much variety is right. And, you know, like there's so many, we, we've evaluated, I mean, how many different asset classes have we evaluated from private equity to real estate to, you know, this yeah. and that. And, and I think part of it is like, we have to know what true North is and we always have to be, you know, cognizant of, of serving that, you know, as our core. And then like the hub and spoke is like, what's the things that are adjacent to that where the community is looking for opportunity and that we can serve and bring value. And, and I'm excited about the things that in the next six months that I think fulfill some of that. Including hopefully um, post pandemic events. It is crazy to me that I haven't seen you in a year's time. Um, and much of the world is feeling the same way. Uh, we we threw some pretty incredible events over the last couple of years, and uh, I'm excited to get back to that and, and being able to shake hands again with people in our community. And um, with that and some of the great events, I'm curious what some of your uh, favorite events that we've done are. Talk about that a little bit. Well, let me let me just. I, I'm. I mean, I I think I'm like everyone else. I just. You, you want that human connection again. You want to be, you know, surrounded by that community. And, and I, I'm hopeful that the rest of the TPI community feels the same way so that when we are able to do it again, you know, we're going to do it. It's going to be great, right? We're, you know, to yeah. have that, have that community together. Um, look, the, <laughs> the first CES event in, um, in Vegas was the scale of that was pretty remarkable, right? Um, and I'm not, you know, there's no sense in like name dropping or anything, but I think the execution of that, and obviously we, we all put in a ton of work, like that was a ton of work it was a ton of work. And I'm proud of, I'm proud of that as being like our first flagship event. It certainly wasn't like the best, I don't know, like how you would objectively say, oh, it was better than the other event. But I think as our first flagship event, like I'm really proud of what we did there. I'm it really was proud full of, of so uh, much emotion, right? People were like, yes, they, this thing is for us. This athletes, they're focused on athletes. I think there was a lot of emotion, albeit not perfectly executed at times. The, the heat in that building was terrible, but yeah, it was really exciting. And I agree. Uh, I'm very proud of that. And I think for us, it's sort of, it, it continued to support and validate this idea that athletes want to be part of the conversation. They don't want to be, you know, they don't want to be taught or, or, or like, it doesn't have to be didactic. You know, it, it, like they want, they have information and knowledge to contribute and, and it's all valuable. And we, we thought that that was the case and we tested it and we got rave reviews. Um, the, the, the SB event was really cool. Um, different, di totally different, totally um, different. But, yeah. but, but really neat. Um, look, I, you know, there, it, there's been some challenges. Like there's also, you know, there, when we, we showed up in, I don't know, was it 
Nashville and like the place that we it oh. was available and we had 24 hours to find the place and do the thing and like and and it's we stressful. pulled it off we pulled it off and you know there was probably a little more visible duct duct tape than we would have anticipated or <laughs> liked but um but that's that's event business like that's just being in the event side of things is like that kind of yeah. that kind of stuff happens and um but i mean what's the what's the total number i mean what are we like i What's the total number of events? Of events? Yeah. Oh gosh. Uh, probably nine. Nine. And and that remember we did them all very tightly within a, a year and two months because we started CES in January of 2019, and then our last event was the NBA All Star Game in Chicago last year. So we did yeah. a lot of events in a short bit of time. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I'm really looking forward to you know, and I'm a, you know. The, <laughs> I have a, th a threshold in terms of like how many events I can help with, but, and I know you have an ambition to do like 10,000 of them. Million. Um, right. And there is a point at which, you know, a certain amount makes sense, but I'm excited for, you know, maybe it'll be the ESPYs, you know, maybe by July, we can all, we can like do another great event and, and, and have the group together again. Um, that would be amazing. Right. I mean, you know, and I think we've, we've learned a lot through this last year, in terms of in terms of how our community is responding to certain opportunities and i think now more than ever we're in a position to like really serve the center of the target in a way that we weren't you know we we're, we're growing up we're getting there yeah we're like i don't know are we teenagers are we like adults I, maybe we're like adults i don't know young adults i feel like <laughs> we're like um, well, the Super Bowl, don't forget, is in your hometown next, and that one's always a big one for TPI. So we're going to lean on you for LA. My hometown. Okay, right. Um, since I'm homeless, I was like, <laughs> at the moment. Well, you're a bit homeless now, but where you're from? I'm homeless now, where I grew up. Yeah, no, that, we're definitely doing something there, 100%. Right? Crazy. There's no way we're not. And it's going to no, be, no, we were not. Everybody just be. buckle up. It's going to be a big one. Yeah. 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 I can't wait. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I know that um, we only asked to borrow your time for 20 minutes of TPI talk. So thank you. I want to, um, two quick questions to end. One is what do you, what, if you can identify one thing that you're most excited for here, whether it's in TPI's future or some trend that you see coming. And then I've got a fun question to ask. Fun? Fun or fun. Fun. It'll oh, be fun. F U N. Oh. <laughs> so I heard I heard that TPI invested in a SPAC, and that sounds really exciting. That's very uh, exciting. <laughs> <laughs> that was what had over a billion dollars of interest. We were oversubscribed significantly. Um, and this is really exciting. I'm, I'm I'm excited not just to be involved in it and to have brought that opportunity to TPI, which mm -hmm. In retrospect, you know, and not not to, you know, shoot my own horn here like that. I think that was a great that's a really great opportunity. I mean, that was a really that's good why we keep you around. Community. Well, every once in a while, you know, even a blind squirrel finds another word. I don't know. How to say <laughs> but uh, no, I think I think that's going to be that that's going to be a great um, outcome. And I'm excited. I'm excited to continue to as I can share more. But um, awesome. Yeah. Okay. Fun question. Really random. You did fail at two sports, but you did pretty well in one. If you were a baseball player, baseball pitcher, more specifically, what's your walkout song? Um, I, either Bell Bib DeVoe Poison. Love it. Love or it. This is, or, or this is how we do it. <laughs> come on these are, these are good choices right come on though that's what? since i've seen you dancing to both of those songs in our <laughs> at some of our events that makes me laugh <laughs> <laughs> they're timeless classics what are you talking timeless about classics absolutely oh. uh that's great thank you garrett so much not only for this but for everything really appreciate you and um grateful to have you on the team thanks likewise Thank you, Garrett, for coming on to today's episode to launch our very first episode of TPI Talk in 20. And thankful for you to dive into what the player's impact is. 
hopefully everybody enjoyed it and uh, will follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and our website to hear all of the latest TBI news. Thank you everybody for listening and hope you enjoyed it.